much. All of our units are inside and climate controlled with 24-hour access and security. Our leases run month to month, so you're not locked into a long-term commitment, giving you the flexibility to move your belongings out the minute you purchase your new home. Stop by today or give us a call, 530-8003. That's 530-8003. Jessa Premium Storage. The cool, clean, and kiss. This is Sammy Dixon at the all-new Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. If you haven't had a chance to come see our new state-of-the-art showroom, then there's no better time than right now. While you're here, take advantage of huge savings on new Ford trucks. Get more than $10,000 off on select new F-150s while they last. You must hurry. They're going fast. Over $10,000 off on the best-selling truck in America for 39 straight years. You can also take advantage of money-saving low, low interest rates on new and certified pre-owned vehicles. Our new bigger showroom means more inventory, and that means bigger savings for you. Come to the house at Good Service Bill and buy from Mike Birch Ford, and we'll give you five free oil checks is following 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. If you're looking for an incredible deal on a new or pre-owned vehicle from the dealer who has always put you first, stop the search. Call the all-new Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. This is Sammy Dixon saying thank you. Thank you very much for your business. All right, eight minutes after eight o'clock, you're listening to The Big Dog, WIFO-FM in Jessa, 105.5 on your FM dial. Well, it's the uh, 15th day of April, a Friday morning. Butch Hubbard here with you in The Big Dog. We currently have 56 degrees here in southeast Georgia. A uh, pretty good chance of rain this morning, which we've already had, decreasing to a 40% this afternoon, but still cloudy throughout the day. High today of 66 degrees. Tomorrow, cloudy, breezy, 30% chance of showers, high near 67. And then Sunday, the sun returns, sunny on Sunday with a high near 74. The autumn harbor is 11.8 feet and falling. Did you get wet over there in Huntsville yesterday, Bob? Yeah, pretty wet. And they still played, though. Played tired and tired. Yeah, they just wanted to get them in. Both teams had Jimmy Senior Pro on weekend, so their object was to get them in. So luckily they got them in. Had enough uh, dirt and sand, whatever, to keep the field playable. So they got them in. Okay. The games. Both games done. So region schedule is over. Got to sit back and wait and see what happens today between Thompson and Burke. And hoping for a split. But that's one of those teams sweep. They win the title. So we'll get second if one of those teams sweep. We'll have all that for you on Monday. Okay. All right. But it was miserable calling his names with Terrain. Oh, I'm sure. I didn't even go over to the uh, law enforcement appreciation get together in Glenville yesterday because I just didn't want to be out in the rain. So I guess it went well over there. Oh, no. I hadn't talked to anybody who, who's gone. I know that Matt went. Uh, he said he was going to go. Uh, but I decided, nah, I just don't want to get out there in the, the wet and the damp. Can't afford to catch a cold. Got to work. <laughs> I just, you know, in your situation, you've got to be out there because it's an outdoor sport, but I didn't have to go. But I'm sure they had a good time with Glenville, but they always do a great job of, of the uh, law enforcement appreciation to get together in Glenville every year in April. I wonder what kind of rain they had over there. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. But um, a friend of mine, we're going to go at about 5 o'clock. We said, nah, we'll just stay. It seems like it was all in. Hinesville, the rain is hot. I don't know if it's raining. It was raining here. <laughs> was it raining in Glenville or not? Yeah, so. it was raining. I don't know about Glenville, but it sure was raining here in Jessup. It was raining in Hinesville and Jessup, I can tell you that. And uh, we got a pretty good shower early this morning, right around 7, 6.45. You know, it came down pretty hard, and now it's slacked up a little bit where it's just drizzling right now. But uh, that'll continue on and off throughout the day and tonight. Decreasing to a 30% chance of showers tomorrow, but still overcast and breezy. And sunshine on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. With four kisses for Saturday in Athens. Look, they're expecting rain there. So. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what happened to the free concert by the Zach Brown Band. It was all set up and they canceled it. Now it's wow. ludicrous and that's ludicrous. So I don't understand what's going on in Athens, but... Zach Brown Band was all set ready to do a concert, and they promoted it. And all of a sudden, at the last minute, they said, "Nope, they're done. They're out. No, no free concert by Zach Brown Band." But then, at the last minute, they got Ludacris to perform. So, you have no idea what happened. I have no idea what happened. Don't know that the inside story. Nothing posted on. Can't find anything. But all I know is that's the latest in Athens. But the game is the most important thing at four o'clock. So well, of course, but Jack off Brown, for work, but you know, what's, been, what's going on? Yeah, you know? I have no idea. I was told yesterday that it's Ludacris instead of Zach Brown Band. So, well, what's a Ludacris? That's a rapper. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. So you're like me. It's Ludacris. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'd rather have Zach Brown Van, but oh well, life goes on. But hopefully a big day tomorrow. It'd be interesting what kind of crowd they get. Like I said, they're promoting it, hoping to pack it up. 93,000. Not sure if they're going to get it or not, but we'll see what the crowd is tomorrow for the G-Day game. I mean, Georgia is not traditionally known for filling up the stadium for a G-Day scrimmage, so we'll see if the fans respond and they all show up and pack it out. Okay, for Athens tomorrow, <clears throat> actually Watkinsville, which is basically Athens, this is the National Weather Service, they have their, here they have it down in Odom, up there they have it there on the University of Georgia site out there, near Watkinsville on the, the weather site. And uh, let's see here, tomorrow it's going to be a little cloudy in the morning, but then by midday it'll become sunny with a high near 67, so it looks like it's going to be good weather. Good weather, there you go. Sunny, high near 67. It's interesting. Normally, one quarterback, quarterback's mm -hmm. one team, one quarterback. Do it. What Kirby's going to do is going to let one quarterback, quarterback both teams and play a quarter oh. and play the next quarter. You know, so, not going to have two different quarterbacks on two different teams. You're going to have the same quarterback, quarterback both teams for a certain period of time. And then the next quarterback will quarterback to two teams for the same period of time and then the third quarterback. So, okay. that's the way it's going to go up in Athens. It's kind of something different. It'll be interesting how it all plays out up there Saturday. Yeah. So high sixty seven, so you'll need to wear a jacket. Uh gonna have a little maybe a little breeze up there also, but uh, by the time the game begins it should be mostly sunny, high near sixty seven and a little breezy. So wear that jacket, it'll feel like football weather. Go dogs. Go dogs. No matter who you're pulling for, dogs go win. <laughs> so you can't keep weather away. It's gonna be nice and cool out there, sunny, gonna feel good up there in Athens tomorrow. And go out there and go to the G Day game. Now, it's free, so I guess it's first come, first serve. How do they do that? I guess that's the way it is. You know, they don't, I mean, there's no tickets for the game. So, you know, as soon as you walk in the gate, just go pick out your seat. So it is first come, first serve. So, and have you talked to your folks here in town who have um, season seats? Do they get the, their like reserved, roped off areas for them or no? <laughs> It's first come, first serve. No reserves. So if you want to get there and sit on the 50-yard line, third row up, you can do it if you can get there first, right? Get there first. All right. First come, Don't first serve. So what time is the gates open? I want to be going in. I know that's what I want. I know it will be. It'll be gates. lined up for a mile long. Yeah, so. It'll be interesting how it all plays out. I said be interesting what kind of crowd they do get. Mm -hmm. be interesting. I said they've been hoping and, you know, pushing for the – packed stadium so we'll see if they get you know people like alabama michigan people like that get packed stadiums for their spring games mm -hmm. so, they do. like i said george traditionally you know it's half full most of the times at least that's been the trend in the past 30 years that i know of i mean i don't, oh, yeah. like I don't remember being packed for a g-day game so. yeah so we'll see how it all plays out <laughs> hopefully a good crowd shows up saturday all right what time is the game tomorrow four o'clock Four o'clock, huh? Okay. ES okay. ESPNU has the telecast. So you got Direct TV, that's channel 209. I'm sorry, 208. One of those numbers. Yeah, ESPN 2 is 209. ESPNU is 208. So ESPNU at four o'clock. I'm going to televise it live. Okay. So there's a live telecast tomorrow at four o'clock. You okay. have ESPNU. Okay. But, but it's going to be interesting how the quarterback. Battle gets underway. I said, you know, everybody's talking about Easton, you know, a lot of pressure to mm -hmm. start the freshman. You know, Grayson's coming back for his senior year. Ramsey's back from Camden. They got him in the mix, you know, trying to get him to step up, be a leader. So we'll see how it all plays out tomorrow. Be interested to see the comments of the coach afterwards. Like I said, he's been real. My mom, the quarterback situation really hasn't said much about any of them. Just says, you know, they're all three getting reps and they're getting as many reps as they possibly can. So okay. no one's really stepped as the leader of the pack, as they say. So we'll see how it all plays out. Wish you great stuff. I know, something about it this morning. It's just uh, it's still up in the air. Uh, the coach, Kirby, will say that, you know, looks like that Grayson's going to be the, the star because he does, makes it, uh, you know, really good plays, but then he makes a couple of really bad decisions, and that kind of pulls him back a little bit, and then he thinks about, you know, the Bryce and the, 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 the uh, new guy coming in. So as you just mentioned, it's still not clear yet. And like I said, he's made it perfectly cool, clear. It's not going to be clear till day one before day one. the season. You know, <laughs> he, you know, he said he made the starter an hour before the game time, but we'll see how it plays out. Uh, friends of mine keep 
reminded me that you know, he comes from Alabama. Where Alabama doesn't really you – know, they don't have the marquee quarterback. They went on defense and went on other talents. Mm-hmm. They don't really focus a lot on the quarterback situation. Okay. So – We'll see how it plays out. Wish him Grayson the best, though. Like I said, senior year, I've seen him do well. Like I said, he's been up there the whole summer, whereas last year he got up there at the last minute after having to graduate from Virginia, so he didn't right. really have all the all the summer workouts. And, you know, he's been there the whole off season. so in the weight room. We'll see how it plays out. I still, I still believe he starts before the season begins. You think so? He's got the experience. I think he starts. He's got the arm. He's a winner. He's he's a leader. He's proven Mahomes out of one. Commodity. Won nine games last year. So yeah, plus they. So I, I still say he's the starting quarterback when they open up against North Carolina at the George Dome. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'm trying to find the information on why uh, they backed out, but I. I Zach Brown, but I can't find anything. They just said the same thing you did. They found Ludacris that could play at the 11th hour, is what they said. But they don't say why Zach Brown Bain's not there, so I don't understand. No, it was a video. You know, we had a few lines, so I didn't want to. So, So, will there be 92,746 people there? It's the 10th largest stadium in the NCAA. I love the largest stadium in the United States. 18th largest stadium in the world. Interesting facts, you know, but you know, I want to project 70,000 show up. 70,000? That's okay. what I want to project. 70,000. You think that the very top decks are probably not having anybody in them? I don't believe they're going to pack it up. Okay. I think they're going to have a, one of the largest G-Day crowds ever in Athens, mm-hmm. but I don't believe they fill it. I believe they get about 65,000, 70,000. Okay. That's, that's my guess. Okay. He's modeling all this after what uh, Nick Saban did when he came to Alabama, trying to pack out, get the passion up, that kind of stuff like that. And they so. do pack it out in Alabama. I mean, mm, they I mean do. That's, that's an annual event. But traditionally in Georgia, they don't pack, <laughs> they don't pack out scrimmages. So that's what this is. I mean, it's just a glorified scrimmage. But it is the first chance, to, you know, for Georgia fans to see Eason and see what it's all about and see what, what's coming back. Like I said, Nick Chubb's not going to be there. He's still rehabbing that injury. So we're going to see what other back step up. Sonny Michelle expected to have a big day Saturday. So. It'll be fun to watch, you know, see what all Kirby Smart, you know, what the offense looks like, what the defense looks like. It's going to be fun to watch the new regime. You know, it's mm-hmm. been a long time since we've had a new coach. Long time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. a lot of excitement, a lot of anticipation. But, you know, mm-hmm. as George fans find out, 11 games isn't good enough, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you got you want to win the big games. You know, you want to win the SEC East, you want to win the SEC. You know, it's just not – the, the record, it's what games you lose, you know. You know, it says here that uh, Georgia has a base of about 55,000 season ticket holders, which you can depend upon year in, year out. It's got about 18,000 students to go. You know, they get tickets, but they get a very reduced rate. Uh, at least it was when I went there. Yeah, the good thing is the students are on campus right now. So, I mean, yeah. that, that could help them as well. If, this, if the entire student body shows up for free, you know, that's that's. That could help. That could help. That could help. Right that could, there's so. about ten thousand uh, tickets that are set aside for visiting fans. So that's usually the breakdown for uh, UGA on Saturdays there in Athens during the fall. And then of course you have just the regular tickets that are for sale. Okay. You think they're going? You think they're going to fill it? I don't. I don't think. I don't think that very new section, top section, like the third level up. You know, they made it to make it ninety-two. I don't think there'll be folks up there, but I think the rest of it will be fine. Which will get it, as you mentioned, probably down to about seventy to seventy-five thousand people. I mean, that's what I'm guessing. Yeah. Which, now, will, which will be a good start, you know. And, and years be. down the road, hopefully they can fill it on a G day game. But I think I don't think the first time out they're going <laughs> to get ninety-three thousand people in that <laughs> I'll be very surprised if it's packed to the max. So. But I know a lot of people going up. A lot of Wayne Canyons are going up, so hopefully y'all have a chance. Are you trip. still going? I think I'm going to pass. Oh, I thought you were gone. I was fired up by the Zach Brown band concert. Oh, you wanted to see Zach Brown. Yeah. I mean, that that was part of it. Yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, that was a free concert. That would have been fun. I'm not into ludicrous. You know, like I said, that's, to me, it's ludicrous. The ludicrous is playing. Yeah, that's you're going to watch the game. 
But after yesterday and after it I said it, when I found out it was on TV live, it's just, I mean, four hours up, four hours back. I know, I, think, I know. I think it's just easier to sit on the couch and watch it live. Plus, oh, we don't have to get to see wait, it place. Wait, this must be it right here. Hold on, hold on. Let's see if this is a recent article here. Uh, da, 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 da. A charity trip to Florida has turned scandalous for country star Zach Brown, who was allegedly involved in a police investigation over a Florida hotel drug bust. Say it ain't so. I'm saying it's so. I'm reading it right here, Bob. Oh, yeah, that's why. The front man of the Zach Brown band was reported partying in a room at the Four Seasons in Palm Beach, Florida last Friday, where police later found Mayor's Juana and cocaine. TMZ is reporting this now. However, however, the Toes singer only appears once by name in the police report, which is, doesn't detail his involvement with drug field party. So, he may have just been a victim of circumstance, or he could have been had a little marriage on him, which you get just about any country star, rock star, you might find some on. Now, the problem would be if it was uh, the, the, the C stuff, you know, uh, cocaine. Uh, Brown, wait a minute here. Uh, Brown was allegedly in possession of prescription pills and has asked, been asked by the authorities to provide proof of that medication. Okay? So maybe Zach Brown is on painkillers of some sort. Maybe the doctor has him on something for some reason or another. But, folks, if you do not have those uh, medications in their... Uh, prescription pills in the, in, the, in, the, in the bottle, don't put single pills in your pocket. <laughs> you know, make sure you have those pills in your in a prescription bottle that you get. So um, that's the reason why. So he just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time at a charity concert now. Uh, but then they got partying afterwards and the party got busted. And So it's a legal issue. That's why it's, it's a legal good. issue. I got you. Okay, that's the reason why they back up. I wonder why. You know, no one was saying why they're not performing. You yeah, know, everybody. I mean, they've been hyping it up for weeks that Zach Brown Bain was going to perform before the G Day game, and at the last minute, I said I heard yesterday that that had been canceled. So, so we'll let we'll let the the, the cops, the police down there, the law enforcement, uh, work out all the details, and uh, so we'll know what the exact truth is of what went on down there. Okay. We don't want to do any speculation right now. Yeah. If they found prescription drugs on him, maybe he had a prescription for him. Maybe he was, hey, I had somebody come up here and say, can you hold these for me? I got to go to the bathroom. I mean, you can always use that excuse. I thought TMZ was too busy following Johnny Manziel around. <laughs> no, they found. I didn't have bad time for <laughs> Zach Brown Band. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know, Bob. Apparently they do. Johnny Manziel. What is, that is a sad story. Isn't it? Is so that sad. about as sad as it just? You just want to shake your head. You want the kid to do good, and every time you think that he's got his life turned around, I don't know. So, so much talent just wasted. I was just dead. I bring him home and put him on my knee. I don't care how old he is. I mean, I still picture him lighting up Alabama twice. I mean, he was oh just, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was just so much fun to watch on the collegiate level. He's exciting to watch. I mean, exciting to watch. He had all that potential, and now he got all that money, and now he just can't seem to. He, he's, he's, he's got an addiction problem, and he just yeah. can't overcome it. Yeah, Drew Rosenhaus was supposed to represent him, and Drew Rosenhaus said part of the reason he was going to represent him, he agreed to go into rehab, but Rosenhaus said yesterday if he doesn't go into rehab, he's not going to represent him anymore, so he dropped him. So. Johnny Manziel is going to so he's going to live at Bon Miller's house. And Bon Miller says no, he's not living with him. Mm -hmm. Now, is that so protect you say that you're living with someone? No, I don't know. And then you're not. not so I, I mean, I mean, you know good well that the guy's going to say no, he's not there. Right. Maybe he spent the night one night and he thought he was living there. Or <laughs> but the, the sad thing is, he's in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. You know, it's just it's sad to see. And it's they had an article. Not long ago, his dad said he'd, mm -hmm. he'd live to see his next birthday. That's how concerned his parents are. But it doesn't seem to mind. He's out there partying, having a good time, I guess. But it's just every time you turn around, TMZ's got him somewhere at some nightclub partying. And 
doing stuff he's not supposed to be doing if he wants to be a professional athlete. So. I know it's just terrible what Johnny does. I mean, I, you know, when I heard that report the other day when he said, well, you know, I'm living with this guy, the football player, and then he's trying to work things out. And then he said, okay, good. Maybe this is – no. Apparently he must not be telling the whole truth and nothing but the truth. All right, I went to TMZ, and here's their official report on the bottom. Here is the – TMZ. Of course, I'm gonna believe TMC. They're 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 the gospel when it comes to entertainment news. <laughs> yeah, right. Allegedly, allegedly, yeah, allegedly. Just ask them; they'll tell you. Okay. Palm Beach police repeatedly lied. And this is the TMZ's reporter here saying this. Palm Beach police repeatedly lied and covered for Zach Brown, who was caught up in a drug bust, and they were so star uh, starstruck by him that some of the uh, policemen even asked for the country singer's autograph. As we, TMZ reported, Zach was in a Four Seasons hotel room a week ago at around 5.30 a.m., when cops raided the place and arrested four people for marijuana and coke possession, including two strippers. After learning Zach was in the room but not arrested, TMZ made multiple contacts with the police, Palm Beach uh, Police Department, all who strongly and repeatedly told us, TMZ, they had no evidence Zach was in the room. We learned not only was Zach in the room, TMZ, but the cops who made the bust were big, big fans. TMZ sources say several cops on the scene asked for his autograph, and the officers who took one of the strippers to the station mocked her for not knowing Zach, the big country star. <laughs> we also were told that the stripper, when she arrived at the police station, and several other officers joked with her about Zach and the fact that she didn't know the famous country music singer. Other sources say Zach asked the cops to keep him out of the police report because he had a wife and kids. It seems the police did everything in their power to facilitate that. In uh, TMZ's numerous contacts with the police department, they repeatedly asked for any information tying Zach to the bust. Although TMZ now knows a document did exist tying Zach to the room, we got they got this in the email response from the police official. So he's in one police report, but there's no hard evidence yet that he was doing anything wrong except for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Zach, didn't your mom tell you that nothing good happens after midnight? Well, <laughs> at least we know now why he's not playing in Athens. On now Saturdays. we know why he's not playing in Athens, but um, um, we'll see We'll see how all this settles out. TMZ will be right on top of it, Bob, so you don't have to worry about not getting the facts and getting them straight, okay? <laughs> This is not the National Choir, Bob. This is TMZ. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with all this. Was Zach in the wrong place at the wrong time? Was he just uh, trying to, to party with the guys and be one of the boys? Or was he doing something wrong? We'll find out. Inquiring minds want to know, Bob. So tell us about the next Wayne County baseball game. Monday in Baxley. Monday in Baxley against the Pirates, huh? Against the Pirates, who are doing well on their way to state playoffs as well. So should be a good ball game. Again, they were struggling when we saw them earlier in the year, but they're not struggling anymore. I think they won like their last 12 in a row. So oh, I think it should be a good ball game over there. All right. Well, Bob, I hope you have a good time watching the dogs play in their G-Day game tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. And you can say goodbye to your buddies as they head up to Athens to watch the game live in living color. Okay. Thank you. All right, Bob. Have a good day. All right, the world famous Butcher Bob Show brought to you by Parker Insurance and Realty on Macon Street in downtown Jessup, across from the Heritage Bank, by Jessup Premium Storage out here on the Waycross Highway, and by Mike Birch Ford and Black Cheer. It is eight thirty-one. W I 